podcasting from Hartford. You're listening to the Connecticut Scoreboard Podcast. All right, we're back for week three with DJ Morgan. It's been a, an eventful start to the season. I know a, a lot going on in, in UConn land here, but DJ, thanks so much for taking some time to come back on with us today. Hey, no problem. So DJ, let's start by talking about the, the game against Holy Cross on Saturday. I, I know obviously not the result everyone wanted, but compared to the game against Fresno, were there some positives that you and the team were able to take away from that performance against Holy Cross that you could apply going forward to the, the next slate of games here? Oh, yeah, definitely. Um, I think similar to the Fresno State game, but a little bit more, um, we were fighting. You know, we there was never a time where we weren't fighting. Um, we fought all the way to the clock hit zero. And um, unfortunately, of course, game the game of football is all about you know, who can make the most plays and we just didn't make enough mm-hmm. um, in the game. But um, still the, the, the focus of the team and just the morale of the team is still high because of course we only played two games. Uh, it's yeah. ten, a lot of football season left. In, in terms of what you're able to take away from that game against Holy Cross going forward into whether it's Purdue this Saturday or, or the rest of the games, you know, what are you guys looking to improve on in, in particular to help, you know, turn some of these games into some wins here? Uh, creating for, as far as defense, creating more turnovers. Um, we've been able to force one um, in each game, but we got to force more. Uh, if, we, if we can force more turnovers and steal the ball and get more possessions for our offense, that would help us tremendously. And then offensively is just, you know, making big plays and creating explosive plays um, definitely would help uh, scoring quick. Yeah. Uh, one touchdowns, three play touchdowns, whatever it is, but scoring quick um, would definitely help. And from a special team standpoint, uh, creating momentum. Uh, special teams is one of those those areas that some teams uh, don't spend too much time on. But here, uh, special teams is just as important as offense and defense. So creating a big play on special teams that can help change the momentum of the game or just create a big play or get us some points or a turnover as well. Mm -hmm. In talking about the offense, I'm curious, as you're, everyone's hoping that the offense can be a little bit more explosive and and put some more points up on the board. How is it from a defensive standpoint when when the offense is struggling from time to time, does it feel like a burden of the game? A lot of it is on your guys' back to to be able to keep everybody in the game and and limit those big plays because you know scoring might be tougher at that time. No, it's definitely not a burden. Uh, you know, our, as our job as a defense is just to try to hold them to zero. Yeah. Um, and we just try to, each time we go out there, that's that's our mindset is just hold these guys to zero, get a stop, and get another opportunity for our offense. Because we believe in our offense. We believe in all – every guy that's in that – on that side of the ball, whether it's the guys that are on offensive scout team or the guys that are starting and playing on the Saturdays. Uh, we got faith and, and tremendous uh, faith in those guys. I know you, you talked about the team morale still being pretty high and, and everyone, you know, fighting through the end of that Holy Cross game. I know a couple of players have called out and I, I'd love to get your thoughts on it. There, there was that clip that went viral uh, in the huddle there with, with coach Spanos there. And, and it seemed like the team wasn't buying right into it at, at that moment. And it seems like everyone's kind of come out and debunked that from your perspective there. What, what was that moment like? And did that clip just simply get taken out of context there? Yeah, the clip definitely got taken out of context. Uh, and that and that team huddle, Coach Coach Panos was letting us know we got to get the ball out, get the ball back to our offense. Because, um, of course, I believe there was like about four and a half minutes left. Yeah. And I think they were going into their – it was a second down play that they were about to attempt. So the message was get the ball out, get a stop to get the ball back to the offense. And then, again, we'd have to come out and do the exact same. And – um. When Coach Banos put his hand up, if, if the clip was to roll more, you'll see everyone was in there locked in. So I believe there was still about 30 more seconds left in that TV timeout. So we were all in the huddle, uh, locked arms, hands in the air. And then we actually, we did. We went out and got a stop and, and gave another chance for our offense. In, in terms of w- what's gone on since the game, I, I don't know how much you could share, but what was the time, what's the timeline been like for you in, in terms of what the events of the past couple of days have been like, you know, obviously it came out Sunday that the coach had still had initially announced that he was going to be retiring at the end of the year. Was that something he, he came in and spoke with you and the rest of the team about, but before that went out there? Yeah, he did. Yeah. He talked to us about, about that um, right before I went out there. Um, but the timeline uh, things have, Things have been going the last, what, 72 hours or so after yeah. that game. Uh, There's a lot of events that happened. Um, but the guys and, and the coaches that are still here um, 
our main focus has just been to, you know, kind of quiet that and just keep the focus on Purdue because at the end of the day, we have to go out there and play Purdue on Saturday. There, there's no there's no getting around that game. So we have to go out there and perform against Purdue. Yeah, I, I know it, w- it was Bruce Feldman of The Athletic who, who had said that kind of in this timeline of events, there had been some issues in the locker room. Do you have any thoughts on, on what, the, what the locker room was like over the past couple of days? Uh, over the past couple of days, the locker room has been good. Um, after the game, of course, you know, guys are – there's there's emotion. So, you know, guys are just getting after each other, letting each other know, like – we have to be better. Um, this is this isn't acceptable. Like losing the Holy Cross, um, you know they were the better team on that day, but we hold ourselves. We have high standards for ourselves. So mm-hmm. to lose that game and lose any game, um, is just isn't right. We have high standards. When Coach Edsel had, had let you guys know that that he was going to retire, and, and then you find out the next day he's actually not going to be coming back at all. Was there any surprise to the team there? Were, were you guys expecting him to to last out the the rest of the season once he had made that announcement to you guys? Oh yeah, uh, initially, oh uh, yeah, we were, and then of course, like when you get the news that that's not what's going to be happening, um, it was one of those things where you got to adjust. We just had to adjust to the new era and the new the new that's going to be happening. Yeah. So you, you, you've got coach Spanos there now as the interim, as the guy on the defense, I'm sure you've got a, a good relationship with him and have been close with him for those who might not be as familiar with him. Cause he, he hasn't been in the spotlight quite as much uh, in, in putting himself out there. What, what's he like from a, a coaching perspective? Oh man, coach uh, or coach Spanos, he brings, he brings enthusiasm. He brings all that stuff, the juice to practice every single day. He's the same guy every day. Um, no matter what day of the week it is, what time of the year it is, what time of the morning it is. Coach, Coach Panos is the same guy uh, through and throughout. <laughs> What's it been like as he's been getting up to speed here now taking on the, the head coaching duties? Is, it, is he just kind of jumped right into it? What, what's it been like? Yeah, he's jumped right into it, and uh, it fits him well. Uh, he, he's definitely – he can relate to all the players. Um, he gets along – he already got along with all the guys on the offensive side, um, and now that he's able to, you know, be around the offensive guys more – um, the offensive guys are, are getting are being able to see uh, what we see on the <laughs> defensive side uh, every day. And for me, being a linebacker and, and Coach Spanos being the linebacker coach uh, previously, uh, we're we're around Coach Spanos all the time. So they get to finally see and and hear the jokes that he makes that goes over some guys' heads. <laughs> In terms of, of getting ready this week for Purdue, you know, you've got the the new coach there. You've got a new quarterback has been announced that's coming. Does it feel like this is kind of a reset for you and the team to say, hey, like past two games, like that's in the past and, it, and it's time to move on now and, and see what we could do the rest of this season here? Yeah, definitely. Our, our mind says we're, we're on a 10 game season right now. Um, everything resets. Um, obviously, our record doesn't reset, you know, of yeah. course. But in our minds, you know, this is a 10 game season. And we have to go out and perform. And we're going to take it one day at a time and one game at a time. What's it been like uh, preparing for Purdue? You know, you got a Big Ten team here coming to the rent, which is always exciting. What, what, what's it been like preparing for them? And what are you expecting from them? Um, it's It's been fun preparing for them. Uh, of course, every week is fun preparing for the opponent. Um, and, you know, we're expecting them to come out and, you know, be a physical football team. Um, offensively, defensively, and special teams, they're, they're solid in all three units and in all three phases of the game. And uh, we're looking forward to that challenge. I'll get you out and, and we can wrap on, on this one with, with Coach Spanos taking over and, and you haven't worked with him so much. What, what's something about him that people might not know or, or might not understand about Coach Spanos having not not interacted with him much? Coach Spanos, Coach Spanos is funny. He he he's definitely what, what we call a good crazy. He <laughs> can flip the switch, he can switch any second and go right back to joking. But Coach Spanos. <laughs> We, we all know when it's time to work, it's time to work. And then there's also times to, you know, joke around. And uh, he's really good at building fences uh, as far as like building fences in our lives where there's time for jokes. There's times for, you know, getting the business and also keeping in mind that, you know, family's important. Continue to talk to your family because, um, of course, all of us are away from our family. So mm-hmm. being in touch with that side as well, off the field and then on the field. I might have got I've got one more here as I'm thinking since he's taken over have things changed much in terms of the way you guys have been preparing this week or, or things like that or is it still kind of business as usual as, as it had been leading up to to the past couple of weeks here um things have changed things have changed a little bit um as far as just like the way we go about things uh the main focus is, is flying around and having fun not not being 
afraid to to make mistakes if, of course in practice you can get it back you can correct, yeah. correct it in practice so being able to fly around play 100 percent, and have fun that's that's been the, the biggest uh message that we've we've gotten is, is have fun while doing it um because this is a, this is a game that should be fun uh so every day we come out come out there we try to have fun uh coach spanos he's done a good job he's implemented uh music in certain periods of practice like to fill in is like crowd noise uh -huh. so like we go good on good uh, there's music. So guys are, guys are in tune, you know, no matter if it's the first period of practice, the last period of practice, we, we get up for those periods where, you know, we're competing against the, the offense. Yeah. So I, I've actually, I've thought of a couple more as, as we're talking here in, in terms of, uh, you know, what's been going on this week. I know there's been a lot out there in the media, just about everything in general. And in, in terms of the program, is it hard as a player to kind of keep yourself isolated from some of that and not necessarily read everything, see every tweet, you know, or, or post what's it like from your perspective in dealing with kind of a barrage of just different news out there? Uh, no, it's not too hard to kind of silence it. Um, of course, because even if, if, even if these events didn't take place, uh, there's always stuff in the media, you know, coming from our place where, you know, yeah. we're a division one tweets. And so there's always, there's always different media. There's always different people tweeting at you. Sometimes you want to respond, but of course you, so, you know, there's, there's always different stuff out there, but um, we do a good job of, even if we read it, it is what it is. And, and, you know, of course, no one on the outside truly knows what's going on inside of burden um, mm -hmm. each and every. So, you know, it's one of those things where you just read it, you laugh and just move on because it, yeah. it can't, we, we control our, our destiny. Yeah. In terms of the importance of the football program, because there, there has been stuff written out there saying that, you know, at this stage, UConn should just kind of give up on football, which I disagree with a, a thousand percent, I think is one of the worst ideas out there. What would you say to someone who, who brings that point up and says, hey, like we, we've given it a try. It's like time to throw in the towel. Like what's your response to someone who says it's time for, for UConn to just kind of fold up football? Uh, it's definitely not the time. Um, if anything, we're, you know, there's every program has their rebuilding stage mm -hmm. and uh, it's just, it's, I wouldn't say unfortunate, but you know, of course, timing is just everything. Um, it's just, this is the time of, for, of rebuilding and um, just getting back to, to winning games. And I, I feel like we're definitely on the, on the downside of, you know, of this come up as far as like, you know, we're building, we're building and we're, we're getting ready to reach our peak and yeah. good. And, and I'll truly get you out of here with, with this one here. How excited are you ju just for the rest of this season to play out here? And, you know, it's certainly had its ups and downs in the, these first couple games. But now that you've got that chance, just kind of reset. And again, as, as you said, you, the record's still there, but it gives you guys at least a chance to set, reset and, and go from there. How excited are you for, for these last 10 games here? I'm very excited. Um, like you said, this chance to reset. Um it's it's almost a blessing in disguise uh, of course you know you never want to start start off your season on an 0-2 start um but it's, it's kind of been a blessing in disguise and, and it's a chance for us to to reevaluate early before things got too out of hand as far as you know no chance at all of making a bowl game which is our our ultimate goal is to make a bowl game mm -hmm. and there's still chances for that uh, with 10 games left it's a lot of football um a lot of great opponents still left on the schedule uh starting off with purdue um so it's definitely exciting Good, good. Well, I'm, I'm glad to hear that you guys are, are still good spirits. We're still pulling for you guys. Excited for Saturday against Purdue. Again, got a Big Ten opponent coming here. It's a fun game. Uh, so, so, DJ, best of luck uh, out there on Saturday, and uh, good luck to you guys and the team moving forward. Thanks.